for everything like you wouldn't believe. So let's solve the steering wheel while we're in the neighborhood. Uh, the steering wheel, please, equals Christ the Redeemer. <laughs> the most famous statue of Jesus on earth e equals Cristo Redentor in Portuguese. If you pop off that 33, you got 150 exactly. I'm like 15 times 10. Can you ask for more for the number three? Chain link with 30s in the center is like boom. Um, in fact, like this is chain link, the steering wheel. Chain link with threes just like that. So let's get it on the board. The steering wheel equals Christ the Redeemer. Equals in Portuguese down in Brazil, they say. Cristo Redentor. Beneath this statue, um, equals three times the 18th prime. Threes. Um, beneath this statue, we will see Usain Bolt, God willing, perform a three-peat of the three gold medals that he's won twice already at the Olympics. Rio de Janeiro. Every word divides by three. It's going to be an awesome three fest in that Olympics. As Microsoft Word gives us issues, that's all right. We'll press on in other ways. Okay, so um, here I encourage you to open up the details on these gems. So this article on this hammer thrower who we solved earlier, uh, watch the video for hammer throw. It's extremely satisfying. It's already on YouTube. Uh, look at her performances. Um, she just won gold at, uh, where's the 2015? Oh, there it is, right here. She just won gold. Um, and we solved her name, and you can get details uh, behind it. Um, but uh, she's, she's the best women's hammer thrower in the world. And uh, so, to the glory of God, these things happened. Poland divides by three, um, and you can knit this all together. But you need to get details on her life. And by the way, she's age, oh yeah, we already mentioned she's age 30. Um, nice. Club, Scraw, Warsaw. It's like... Um, best throw. So there you go. Oh yeah, and this is what I mentioned. Uh, she used to wear some equipment that belonged to the late Camila. I can't even pronounce these names. This is difficult. Um, but this is the friend we, we talked about uh, that they knit together to um, make that stunning number I preached on earlier. And uh, so there you go. Uh, Wikipedia equals truth by Divine Orange. And by divine ordinance, the W and the A are enlarged to make 24 triple eight. And there's all these nines in here. KP, triple nine, I, 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 triple nine, plus another ED, nine. So it's love plus nine and like pure nines and 27s in the center and then 24 triple eight. It's too good. So Wikipedia equals truth by divine ordinance. Okay. It's the story of God. Okay. And it's that mechanism. So we can, we can treasure hunt gems in Wikipedia. Like I've been showing you this whole path, you know, like Anita divides by three. Um, and Anita equals Helena. My sister Helena, by divine ordinance, had two blonde twins that were her best friends growing up. Amy plus Anita plus Helena. Helena and Anita were particularly close. They both equal the same thing, 45, 45. Amy is uh, 39, six points less. But the three of them, uh, by divine ordinance, were best friends. Okay? So everything and everyone in our lives is a gift from Jehovah God, but it's very clear that he wants it to be perfect. Okay? So that the trillions of watching angels see the full perfection of God in the whole story, okay? And you are the blessed of Jehovah if you are listening to the sound of my voice and are being invited in to this level of understanding of the perfection of God in the bigger picture before the angels. There you go, okay? So uh, I encourage you to dig deeper into some of these gems, open up Wikipedia on some of these people and these um, teams that we've mentioned. Um, uh, watch the videos on YouTube so you can see the glory of God before your eyes and believe. Okay, you need to understand, you need to watch videos and know that you are watching God's perfection in real time. Okay, and that gives you confidence to accept what is happening in your life as being divine. Okay, relax. Jehovah's timing is perfect. If you don't have something right now, it's because you're not meant to have it right now. Relax. God is asking you like he asked Moses, what do you have in your hand? What is currently in your hands to work with? That's exactly what he's ordained to you to work with. Moses at the burning bush, Jehovah said to him, what is that in your hand? And Moses said, it's my rod. God says, that's what you're going to use. That's what I've ordained you to use. It's exactly what you have in this moment. You have exactly what you need for today. And I am sovereign. So just accept whatever it is that you have and whatever it is that you receive. Accept and worship Jehovah. So I encourage you, I, you must watch this performance by Christian Taylor. Mr. A times triple eight on his sixth attempt, pure threes, he gets 1821 and a triple jump. You can watch it on YouTube right now as I speak. Find more threes yourself. Uh, he lands, and of course, a pit, it's called. The long jump pit, they say. Every word divides by three. 
You know, you just, just yeah, have more fun with it. Triple of 15. You, you see what else you see. Um, <clears throat> you know, the cameraman that runs into Usain Bolt. It's like cameraman equals Jehovah. Praise God. Melissa Bishop, the three-way photo. You must watch that race and see the three athletes uh, become at a photo finish at the end and she edges out them all. Um, and then watch, I encourage you to watch a Ashton Eaton's performances. He's been having stellar performances in all of his events. Uh, the, the, and God gave me that word that decathletes are the world's greatest athletes. And if you haven't watched that video, I insist that you do so. Uh, because this is divine what is happening with Ashton Eaton in this event. Uh, the World Championships, but by divine ordinance, the 10 events of the modern decathlon, the names of all of them combined, add perfectly to triple love times 10. 540, okay, uh, which is, or no, uh, 1,620, triple love times 10. 54 plus 54 plus 54 times 10, which means the average value for each of the individual events of the 10 is triple love. So watch that video and then pay attention to what's happening in the decathlon uh, because we're seeing amazing threes. Um, and you know what? Uh, okay, perfect, wonderful. We were solving celebrities the other day and Beach Boys. I'll just scroll up through this document just so, you can, just so it's recorded on video what we've been doing in the last uh, little while. Just the terms that we've been going through and the words we've been getting from Jehovah. Um, let's, oh, let's start a band that says, let's start a worship band. Okay. Tons of gems from, oh yeah, we got that word from Jehovah, enjoy the ride equals Jehovah which plus Jehovah. By divine ordinance, I was led to go to the Beatle, the Beach Boys performing live in Vancouver. And it was, it's been exactly 54 years since they started in 1961. And 54 equals love. And we preached a ton of gems on that in previous videos, almost two and a half hours of glory. Their original name, this is my favorite gem, their original name was the Pendletones. By divine ordinance, that equals triple love. Love plus love plus love. So watch all those, and that's chain links, you know, with threes, bookended with threes. Watch all my videos, treasure hunting and the Beach Boys story. Uh, you'll be amazed at the perfection of God and worship God. That's your job is to worship and love God. That's the greatest commandment. So let's, let's pull away from the computer now. And I'm going to preach a little bit on these things that I wanted to preach on. We've already touched on it in a big way. Um, <clears throat> Your faith that imperfect, I'm going to put this in quotes, that imperfect things are perfect. Okay, I want to prove to you and I want to instill in you the faith and the confidence that imperfect things are actually perfect. What you think was a mistake. What you think wasn't what you wanted to happen. What you think isn't right at the present moment. If you are a child of God, you qualify perfectly. For the promise of God, which says he works all things together for the good. All things. Okay. So what we consider as Christians, what we might consider to be imperfect things, not so. They are perfect. Okay. God is sovereign. He's in control. Okay. And I'm going to preach. I'm just going to mention a couple of them here. Um, I'm going to pull the camera away from the computer just so you're not staring at text. You can actually look each other in the face, so to speak. Um, and these are just another couple personal notes here. Okay, so let's um, pull this camera away from the computer. I love using a video camera. I, I'm a, this is a Handycam. God ordained this to be called, this video camera has a name, it's called a Sony Handycam. Well, Handycam divides by three. Um, and I love using a video camera because I could just, you know, I could use screen recording software, but it's just not as free and pleasurable and fun as just a camcorder. Um, and I like simplicity and being fast. And I also like to center things, and you can tell. That's pretty good. I just want as much vertical headroom. I'm six foot five and three quarters. It's like, that's why I'm like this in all my videos. It's like, okay, um, the tripod is maxed out. Like the tripod that I've got this camera standing on is like as high as it'll go. <laughs> and I don't have the clip for the, to attach. Okay, anyways. Um, but I just want to preach on imperfect things being perfect. And what we think is, you know, um, for example, if you visit, as I did, a blast from my past, God showing me things from my early childhood that he ordained for mathematical perfection, I used to have a paper route as a kid that would finish directly along the 201 line, my favorite number of world history. And it's a secret alley. It's an alleyway that's really narrow. And it, it, I delivered in the morning. It's really dark. It's really narrow, and it's actually a bumpy path through the wood right next to a chain-link fence, and 
you know, and a house lot right there. But I would finish my newspaper route right along that rugged path coming home, directly along 201, so much so that the house right next to it is 20102. But if you were to come visit this path today, as I did, it's not pretty. It's not shiny. It's not screaming out the number 201 at the top of it. It's not got flashing lights saying, look here, this is amazing. This is the sovereignty of God. It's so special, so beautiful. You know, it looks dirty. It looks unkempt. It looks rugged. It looks messy. But it's perfect. That's the way it's supposed to look in the sovereignty of God. Okay? And uh, this is a huge one. It's like, you know, if, if something, you know, people, for example, we think people look imperfect, you know? We think we have something imperfect about our appearance. You know? Maybe we, for some reason, we don't like it. Get over that. It is perfect. Okay? Accept people the way they exactly are. It's like, yes, they will. It's like, yes, we can be out of shape. Big time. But even there, Christian, if you're out of shape, ex simply accept the grace and the sovereignty of God. That right now, yes, I am out of shape. But, by God's grace, I'm going to get in better shape. Okay? So there's always this amazing, peaceful acceptance that the way things currently are, simply, are what they are, by God's sovereignty. But, he's going to take us forward in glory, like the Bible says, from glory to glory. So, um, and that gives you grace and patience and peace when you look at other people. You're like, you know what? That person has, you know, a physical feature that some people would consider to be a defect, or a problem, or a handicap, or a disability, or whatever. It's like, you know what? That's the way God made him. You're just like, acceptance. Above all, pure, total acceptance in peace and in joy is the Christian's response to the true reality that God is sovereign, that God is in control. <sighs> oh, praise God. It's like, we think we've made mistakes, or we're afraid to make a mistake. It's like, God began speaking to them, that to me a while ago. He says, Derek, you can't make any mistakes. I was like, what? He said to me, Derek, you can't make any mistakes. Because God is sovereign. And he works all things together for good in the life of the believer. Which is me. His kid. He says, Derek, you can't make any mistakes. Even if you think it was a mistake. Even if you think you made a mistake. Even if you think you screwed up. It actually wasn't a mistake. I work all things together for the good of my children. Including you. <laughs> You know, what you consider to be imperfect, wretched you. He's like, relax. All coaches of sports teams, especially volleyball, which I've grown up in, know, at least they should know, that the worst thing you can do to the kids is make them afraid of making a mistake. As soon as athletes are afraid to make a mistake on the performance, they can't perform. <laughs> they're, not, they're certainly not enjoying performing. They're, they're, they're not relaxed. They're not loose and natural. They're, you know, they're all tense and it's like, relax. I love that. You can't make a mistake. You can't. So just do what you feel like doing. Like, in the confidence of God's love and in the confidence of God's total love for you, his kid. It's that great. Okay? God's love for you is that great and it's that good. I love it. So you relax. So, 
And then as, it, as it, I'm preaching to myself, this is an awesome freedom for myself. It's like, concerning what other people look like. Just, you know, maybe they have to wear glasses right now. Because they have, I mean, I, like, I, I didn't have perfect vision. God ordained me to have laser eye surgery. And just, but whatever, pick anything you want about any person you meet. You know? It's like, oh, well, you know, we think that should have been this way, or this should have been that way, or, oh, why didn't they have this, or why why not that, or why, why do I have this and not that, or, you know, in any way that you're just saying to yourself, I don't like this. This is wrong. This isn't the way it should be. <laughs> Something's wrong here. And it's exactly the way it's supposed to be. Okay. Right now. Like even people's spiritual growth. Like God, when Paul was the chiefest of sinners, when Paul was the worst sinner on the planet, God wasn't watching Paul saying, oh man, it's a giant mess, this is out of control. God was watching Paul saying, no, he's exactly where he's supposed to be. So that when my story with him is complete, it's just amazing for what it is. What seems to be the worst of the worst, transformed into the best of the best. Every one of us came from a single seed, smaller than our eyes can see, a single sperm cell. The whole story is so God, and so everything God. It's like Jesus said, which of you by worrying and thinking that something is wrong? The definition of worry is simply thinking that something is wrong. God's out of control. This wasn't supposed to happen. Something's wrong. My life is all wrong. My career choices were wrong. I messed up. God doesn't know. I'm lost. I screwed up. I don't know why I don't have enough money. I, I don't know why I haven't met a spouse yet. All, you know, worry, worry. Something, all worry is based on this wrong belief up here that something is wrong. Surely something is wrong. You know? Jesus said, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? He says, if you can't even do that, why are you anxious for anything else? Each of us came from a sperm cell, smaller than our eyeballs can see. And now I became this man by God's sovereignty. You're just like, yeah, basically I've done nothing my whole life except uh, just kind of be and let God do it all. So, um, another good analogy is it's like a film director that uh, plans a rustic scene and they make sure all the documents in the scene are like look aged and they want to they wanna set the scene like in a, in a rustic attic in a time gone past so they make sure there's dust everywhere and cobwebs and dirt and like disheveled stuff all over the place and it's all nasty looking and like it's epic now because the, the main character's got to find, you know, something. And it's like, is that set wrong? Is something wrong with that set because it doesn't look shiny like we might want things to be shiny sometimes? It's like, no, the director wanted every detail in that set to be exactly what it is. Okay, that's a good analogy for God's sovereignty on this planet. The true story, the true movie, as if it were, in which we live in real time, like, second by second. <laughs> okay. So, confidence in God's sovereignty and in God's love and in God's perfect power and ability is the hallmark of the strong Christian. Okay. Very good. Okay, so we have, um, oh look, here's a book I was ordained to read called The Story of English, which equals 15 times 15. I encourage you to read this and you'll understand the, the glory God ordained and making sure that the numbers of the English alphabet were aligned in the order we have. You say, how do we get the numbers with the letters? Well, it happened through a man with this name, whose name adds perfectly to mathematician in history. History books divides by three. In a year that divides by three, 
order divides by three, Old English divides by three, and he ordered the alphabet as we have it today for numerological purposes, which is all that we're doing here. And amazingly, there were three letters missing in the original alphabet, the T, um, or the J, the U, and the W, three letters that add perfectly to love as they exist by God's sovereign today. So every detail of the whole three fest in detail glorifies the triune God who is love. And so people look and say, oh man, things were so messy back then. Things were so messy in years past, you know, like scholarship was messy, you know. They were just like trying to scratch like letters on walls and like alphabets used to be all sloppy and like, you know, it was just terrible back then. It was just all out of control. It's like, no, it wasn't. Uh, God was as perfectionist back then as he is today. <laughs> he doesn't change in his perfectionism. He always was perfect. He always will be perfect. And this story of his that we are blessed to be a part of is perfect. <laughs> Alrighty. Good stuff. Sprite equals truth. Drink up equals Wikipedia. Okay. Strawberry kiwi equals 201. Fruit equals Jesus equals Messiah. Fruit juice is quite good. Okay. Perfect. Any other gems from the papers that I wanted to? Uh, I think that's pretty good. I might brush up. I might see if there's any new developments in the um, track and field championships uh, with those athletes. Okay. More to come. Guaranteed. More to come.